Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you my Barnes & Noble classic collection. Ooh. I've never mentioned on this channel that I have been collecting Barnes & Noble classics since 2017 when I started getting into the books. Collecting Barnes & Noble classics isn't something that I plan on doing or I was really like into, but since going to Barnes & Noble uh, classic sales, when all the classics are laid on the table and all those beautiful colors, you know, match together, it's great for my perfectionist soul. Plus, if you get them on sale, Barnes & Noble, I think, does our classic sales at least once a year. As far as I know, they sell each book for like $5 or buy two books for $10 kind of thing. I'm not a hardcore classics reader fan. I love reading classics for their language, the, the era that they come from. They've been called classics for a reason and I want to read for myself and know why. Why are they called classics? Are they any good? Will I like them? So far I haven't stumbled upon something that blew my mind and I'm like just like this is the best classic of all time but I do enjoy it and I make myself pick up at least one classic a year classics aren't easy to read they take time and I don't want to hurry myself if I pick up a classic especially if it's a thick one I know I'm gonna be probably reading this classic for a few months it's a dedication now remember I was organizing my bookshelves and I had that empty shelf on top but this is where I was keeping my classic collection let me show you there they are okay okay let's pull all of them down I'm gonna show them to you we're gonna talk about them and yeah the first classic that started this entire collection is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson I picked this book up because my husband was insisting on me reading this book he said that this is the best pirate adventure story you will ever read but unfortunately I didn't like it as much as he did I gave this book three stars um, I was really really picky with how flat the characters were but still I kind of enjoyed the story and I know a lot of people will tell me that Barnes & Noble classics are not really pretty and they're not like collectible stuff and they're really thin paperback and after you read them they're not gonna look as good but that's the thing even though I love um, keeping my books in good conditions and keep them presentable and not dog ear them or write in them I still love seeing that the book was read and loved and yes so that was my first one at the same time Harley my husband bought a classic for himself I recommended him to pick up Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy um, this is a Russian classic I'm from Russia I said read it even though I've never really read the entire thing myself we studied this at school but he picked this book up I think he read like 30 pages and he gave up because he's like I can't handle this and I decided to pick it up and actually read it um, this is a chunky one I remember 2017 I started I think in July and I finished it like in November uh, I was slowly making my way through this beast I really liked the writing I really liked the characters I know a lot of people complain that um, there are a lot of characters with a lot of nicknames and different like paternal names and stuff it's not hard for me since I'm from Russia like I, that's I'm used to all of this so I really could actually enjoy everything about this book except the ending I'm just really confused by Leo Tolstoy's choices so if you want me to discuss this book at length I can totally do this I can talk about this book for hours and how unfair everything is in this book um, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do this so even though back then I rated this book two stars and I was hating on this book so much because of how much this book broke me I still coming back to it and I'm thinking about this book and I do consider this this one being one of my favorite classics actually okay so let's just talk about all the books that I've read so far and then we're gonna go into the books that I own but I haven't read yet here have the complete Sherlock Holmes volume 1 and 2 I read Scarlet Letter and the sign of four out of this collection um, in 2018 um, I haven't finished the book yet because there's so much more to it um, but I am still not giving up. I want to read all the Sherlock Holmes. I was really interested to read some of the mystery classics since this is one of the most, you know, famous detectives in the world. Um, except, except I didn't really like it, so I more prefer Leo Tolstoy to Conan Doyle, but it's still 
classic, it's still good. I can still see what people were obsessing over it, so I have these two beautiful things. I don't really read poetry that much, but um, while I was in Barnes & Noble, I saw this book and I decided to pick it up and read from it, and I actually enjoyed really much the poems of Walt Whitman, This is Leaves of Grass. This book is one of the biggest classics that I own. This thing is huge, it's 900 pages. I have not read the entire thing. Um, in 2018, I think, I started digging into his poems and I really wanted to take my time to read them, analyze them, um, actually writing in the book. This is the first book that I ever ever was writing in. These are poems and I really wanted to work on them and analyze them and write what I think of them, what I get from them. I think I only did it for 10 pages, I mean there's so much more to it. Um, so I am slowly working my way through this one. This is not your ordinary poet but I find something in him that I can personally connect and I can understand. Which is really curious because he is called one of like the best American writers, poets, so... And the last classic that I own and I read is The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I read this book last year, a bore boy. It was slow. <laughs> this book was a piece of work. It made me work. I was researching to find out what is happening, you know, because this book is based on French Revolution and Charles Dickens. I never really read anything about Charles Dickens and he's not writing really simply. He loves his metaphors, he loves this like a sneaky things that he's gonna put in the book and not everyone can see and find it, which I found really fascinating. But yeah, it wasn't bad. I gave it three stars. Um, three stars for me is good, is average. I mean, I give Hannah Karina two stars and I like it so much more than anything else. So is my rating making sense? I don't know. I feel like when I read classics, I really need a few months to a few years to reflect on what I read and then I can come back to it and discuss it, if that makes sense. Okay, and that's it. That's all the classics that I own, that I read. Let's talk about all the others that I'm hoping to get to soon. By the way, I didn't mention that not all of these books I bought brand new in Barnes & Noble. Many, many of those books I thrifted, so if they look somewhat eh, it's because, I'm, it's because I thrifted them. I actually prefer now thrift Barnes & Noble classics rather than buy them brand new. Some of the ones that I thrifted is The Federalist by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison and John Jay. I know this is a really politics heavy book and uh, I'm not gonna be reading this one anytime soon but I purchased it because I know that one day I will be I'll be old enough to understand what's happening and I would want to, you know, dive into a little bit of history. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Uh, this one I thrifted as well. I believe this is a story about African-American family who don't want to be oppressed by white people. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I mean, I haven't read it, but I am really, really interested in reading this one. I have a few books by Jane Austen, such as Pride and Prejudice. Um, this one I bought brand new and I'm really eager to read Pride and Prejudice. Obviously, it's one of the most well-known classics, so might as well just read it already. Um, really planning on reading it this year, hopefully. Also have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. This is a beautiful book that I was able to thrift. A lot of people are that they're saying that they prefer Sense and Sensibility to Pride and Prejudice, which is interesting. I also thrifted Nothingary Abbey by Jane Austen and Persuasion by Jane Austen. Those are really beautiful. I really like this burgundy maroon color in Barnes & Noble classics. I think they're just amazing. Let's just run through every other book. I have The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Never really read it. The only thing I read by Fyodor Dostoevsky is uh, Crime and Punishment. Uh, we had to study it at school. A really fun novel. If you read it, you know. But um, Idiot? No, not really, but really looking forward to reading this one. I have the selected stories of O. Henry, by O. Henry, obviously. There are many, many stories here, as well as I have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, um, one of the most well-known classics of all time. Also really looking forward to reading this one alongside with Pride and Prejudice. Oof. I have the Metamorphosis and Other Stories by Franz Kafka. 
thankfully I didn't bash this name too badly. But this one is one of the shortest classics that I own and um, yeah, thrifted this one as well. I have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott when um, Kayla from Books and Lala and others started um, reading this book and admiring this book and watching the movie, you know, the movie came out. I went and bought it brand new because I was so interested to see what this whole hype is about. Um, this is not such a big classic. I mean, it is kind of chunky, yeah, I guess. But I um, haven't read this one yet and I really should. I feel like I really should. I thrifted The Odyssey by Homer. Oh, I don't know when I will get to it, but the language here, I read a few pages, is just... I gotta brace myself for this one, but the cover is gorgeous. I have Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gasket. I have never heard anyone talking about this classic. Um, again, this is one of the chunkiest ones that I own. Let's see how big it is. It's only 600 pages. It's not as bad as the Walt Whitman's one. It gives me the vibes of Pride and Prejudice, maybe hopefully. Also, when I saw this book, I was so excited because I'm actually really interested in reading The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. This is, I guess, a classic since it's in the classic binding, but it's not, but it's not fiction. This is a non-fiction classic, uh, Origin of the Species, and something that we studied at school in biology, and I was really eager to get this book and read it. I think this will be one of the first books that I'll pick up from my collection because I'm just so invested in it. I have A Room with a View by uh, E.M. Forster. I don't know what this one is about. I thrifted it and it is such a tiny teeny book. I bet this one was really easy to get to if you never really read classics and you want to get and try some. Maybe pick up something smaller like that. I have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Of course, what a collection without Wuthering Heights. Also really really want to read it. I've heard it's really dramatic and um, troubling but I am not scared of anything. I read Anna Karina. What is more scary than Anna Karina? That is right, nothing. So really excited to read this one. Um, I've noticed a lot of classics are either like burgundy or blue. I also have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte sister. This is a chunky one. I'm really scared of this one. Um, hopefully one day I'll brace myself but Today is not a day. We have Walden and Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. You can see that I thrifted this book and I have no idea what it's about. 1845, Essential Facts of Life, The Intrude Upon Our Happiness. I have Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Um, you see the movie, you probably read the book. It's one of the, like, I feel like children's classics, um, which I never read, but I watched the movie. I just really want to read the book now. I have O Pioneers, Willa Carther, the shortest book in my Barnes Noble collection, um, but not, re not really with the easy writing, so. My Antonina by Willa Carther as well, this, in the second book by Willa Carther. Her books have just the best covers, I think. The paintings, oh, I like this one. I don't know what these are about, neither of those, so. Another children's classics that I have is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, by A.L. Frank Baum. I, of course, read it when I was a kid. Of course, I read it uh, with my mom. She was reading it to me, but I never really read the original English version of it. So excited to see what this one is about. And this one even has like pictures and stuff in there. So this is a fun, this is a fun one. Another huge book that I have is Of Human Bondage by W. Summerth Morgan. Oh my gosh, this is such a hard name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But this is a huge one as well, over 600 pages. This is a Victorian book, I think by the French author, I might be wrong. Um, something about liberty of spirit and body kind of thing. Maybe about women libertation, I'm not sure, haven't read it. Don't quote me on that. Another children's classic is The Adventure of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. I know there's a Hickory Finn that I want to get my hands on, but I still don't have it in my collection, but that's okay, I'm gonna get it one day so far. I haven't read this one yet, so it's okay. <laughs> this one you saw in my first reading vlog ever. I'm gonna link it down below. It's a Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. 
oh that's a handful to say um, I thrifted this one as well don't know anything about it I know that my husband hates it and he said don't buy it but I bought it anyway I have Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne now Jules Verne is one of people's favorite adventure author this is one of those I love the cover by the way the vibes are just totally mine I watched the movie everybody watched the movie I my camera keeps focusing on this guy's face. I have never read the book. I really, really want to, so that happens. Oh, there are some pictures in there. Fun! I have The Turn of the Screw, The Aspirin pa Papers in Two Stories by Henry James. I thrifted this one. Also want to mention, this is a glossy cover. None of the other books have glossy covers, but this guy does. It's some different paper or some different format. Everything else isn't shiny like that. Weird. I have Scaramouche by Raphael Sabatini. I think it's the only Italian author I own. You know, this guy who wants vengeance against the rich people, aristocrats and stuff. This is what the story is about. And the last book is the book that I'm scared to read the most. Inferno by Dante Alighieri. This is one of the oldest books in my collection that I own. It was published between 13 in 1321. So this thing is old in the language and it's written this verse and I'm scared because I don't think I will be able to handle it but I bought it because one day baby one day and that's it you guys this is my Barnes & Noble collection I'm hopeful that I'll be able to read it just as fast as I buy them probably not but one can hope, right? Tell me which of these you read, which of the classics is your favorite, and let me know what I should read next. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next one. Bye!